Hey, everybody. This is uh, Major Details After the Pod. What's up? I'm James Connors. I'm James Connors. <laughs> well, now nothing makes sense. <laughs> Nick. Welcome, hey, welcome. everybody. Hey, everybody. Wave, wave, wave. Oh, you give them all waves? That's I crazy. waved at all of them. Jason Cusack, what's up, man? Chris Reference. What up? Sam, how you doing? Ganesh, how you doing? I think I waved at them. They waved back. That's that's called polite society. Oh, James, we've uh, been hanging out all day. Oh God, <laughs> Nick, I can't even bear the sight of you. I can I can barely look at your side of the screen. Oh. Okay, okay now it's better. <laughs> Hi. Uh, so we just recorded episode nineteen of the podcast. Um, what did we talk about, Nick? We talked about how you don't necessarily have to solve a problem to be, to have a good design. Yeah. You just have to like make someone's life happy. Yeah, exactly. We also answered some good questions. We had a, we had a good, good question around that time. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing is like a lot of, it's interesting how a lot of like uh, children's toys, like there's always, you know, they're always like, well, like it's this way because of like, because of learning and like, you know, you look at some toys and you're like, God, like there's, there's so many features here, but it's all about like cognitive, uh, like, um, like developing cognitive skills and developing social skills. And it's like, why don't we ever talk about that when it comes to the to adults, <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, develop some social skills. Um, but, uh, let's see. Seen the new all birds. No, I like all birds. No, you don't stop it. Nick. I think they look nice. I don't know. I don't know why people don't like them. Cause they look like Yeezy knockoffs. What are they called? All birds, sugar zephyrs. Ooh, that's a fun name. I thought I thought the I thought the routine now is that you were gonna look on the at the questions on your phone. Oh yeah, we could do that. Yeah, so that way we're not like giving people motion sickness. All birds. If you're tuning in right now, Nick is currently googling uh, some all birds. Um, it's loading. Oh gosh. Oh, they're, they're flip flops. Oh, are they the world's most comfortable flip flops? I'm sure they're the world's most something flip flops, but <laughs> they're the world's most yellow flip flops. The ones that we're looking at. Yeah, that's, yeah, I was a little, whoa, uh, go hobos in the chat. What's going on, man? Wang. What's up, boy? One half of creative session. We're just chilling out. Oh, now he's taken over the chat. People are talking to him in the chat. Talk to us, okay? We're the main event. Will you guys ever do an episode covering design, designing for disabilities? We kind of, we kind of did in we, this past episode. Yeah, we touched on a big, like a design news topic. Yeah. Uh, um, which I thought that was interesting. Yeah. Um, it was, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, talked about the new Xbox adaptive controller and the packaging behind that. Mm -hmm. Um, so stay tuned this Sunday, new podcast. Also news, uh, we're going to be on YouTube. So you can like, and subscribe on YouTube as well. Right. So, uh, you know, open up your, uh, podcast app subscribe there open up google play subscribe there uh star our website favorite the website um and then go on to youtube and subscribe and then uh also uh follow us both on instagram and uh i don't know are we gonna do igtv i don't i don't know i think we just lost like 15 viewers at that little uh second mm -mm. no um. we gained and then lost all of them um but uh, are we hype beasts yet? I wish. 
we're, we, we're working on it. We always want to be hype beasts. We always want to strive to be hype beasts, but we never actually want to be a hype beast. Does that make sense? Speak for yourself. That's what I want to do. Yeah. I want to always... <laughs> Next time I see James, he's going to be decked out in Supreme. Did James get his Boost 500s yet? Not yet. These are interesting, though. Oh, these are terrible. These are like baseline New Balance. They're not terrible, but... But this they, is what you get in the freak bin at Nordstrom Rack. This, uh... Okay, look at that. That is... This is interesting, though. Is yeah. That pattern on it? it? It looks like they went in with one of those, uh, tools for engravings. For, like... You, did you ever do that, that exercise in school where you... Linoleum block? Yeah. You look... Yeah, it looks like that. It looks block. like linoleum block. Um, but yeah, this is, this is, uh, this is, uh, twice, uh, if not... I guess the phone is a third of the size of my shoe. Um, that's what you get in the freak bin, okay? Oh, Rid Ridiculous says that their friend designed those shoes. I enjoy them, I wear them often. Um, but yeah, this is, but this is my life. <laughs> Linoleum block fam. Yeah, come on. We are family. Get up everybody and see. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I found some I found some good stuff in the freak bin. Um, I'm sorry, James. They have to go through that. Every yeah, time. you have to get onto the back of a Sherpa in order to get to the freak bin uh, at Nordstrom Rack. But um, every time, it's worthwhile. Um, in an ID internship, uh, you are in an ID internship. Really bad at making mechanical slash functional prototypes. Help. Why? Are why are, you Why are you making mechanical prototypes? What happened? What happened to your industrial design? You're supposed to be sketching. Are you uh, are you uh, IDing with some sort of watchmaker? Um, I don't know. I mean, uh, if you're having trouble, um, start start with something crappy and then work up in fidelity. Bad Nick. Why did I say bad Nick? What did I say? Uh, toys. They're working on toys. Uh, Goho was on a train and can't see... I'm not going to use that word. It's spotty AF. Um, supposed to be sketching. That's, that's what he was saying bad. That, uh, but uh, I'm sorry, Gohobo, that you're, you're on a train. Um, uh, I wish we could connect more fully. Uh, lossless quality. Uh, Virginia Tech ID undergrad here. Any tips or tricks to get through school and with internships? When you're in school, be in school. Um, you know, apply to every internship you can. Yeah, that's my tip. I know that Tony Smith, who was uh, he was in the year above me, he was like, call, call, call until you get an internship, like. It's not enough just to send out an email. You have to follow up. You kind of have to be annoying. I was never annoying, which is why I never got an internship in college. Like you have to, you have to pursue the internship, you know? That's funny. That's funny. So you should call and get people on the phone and be like, hey, I need an inter internship. Also, if you haven't listened to our Reed Schlegel episode, uh, he dropped some gold about applying for internships in the Shrink fall and diamonds. spring. Diamonds. So when it's the fall, apply to that frog, get that frog. Um, let's see, there's a question. Um, ask if you can just go ahead and check out the studio. Yeah, I mean, a studio visit is a good way. Just like... Cause that's, that's, that's kind of like the cool way of getting in. Here's what you do. You go to visit the studio and you say, oh, excuse me, can I use your restroom right quick? And then, <laughs> and then you turn the corner and you go hide in the cabinets. Oh. And then sleep overnight and then come out the next morning and just start working. No one um, knows. Here, no, here's a better one. Okay. Okay. You ask to go to the bathroom. Okay. Then you sneak into Yves Bahar's office. Okay. And you sit in the chair across from where his chair is. And then you wait until he shows up and you say, uh, my manager's out and I'm looking for something to do. And you just pretend that you're already an intern and then you're an intern. That's gold right there. Yeah, come on. That's gold. Um, 
What are your thoughts on autonomous cars? Love them. I'm Love them. I'm in. I'm on board. Yeah. I was just talking to Nick today about, um, I would be okay if they banned personal cars in New York City. Get them all off the street. I don't want any parked cars in here. But I was wondering, I, I, I was wondering how you might be able to figure out how many autonomous vehicles, like vehicles that everybody was using, would there need to be to service all of New York? Do you think it would be less than, than you would think, given that people are also gonna use the subway and the buses, or do you think it would be more? Like, do you think it would be just as many cars on the road? Do you think it would only be like 20 cars? Definitely not 20. 50? I think it would be probably more. I think one, if, when the autonomous car thing becomes a mainstream infrastructure, I think more people would take advantage of it as opposed to the subway, because mm. it's a more direct route. So I think there would still be more cars than you would imagine. Maybe, maybe. But I think traffic would flow better. You would you would not have any traffic. Right. If it was all autonomous vehicles, you would have zero traffic. As long as nobody was operating their own car, right. no traffic. Mm -hmm. I think it'd be pretty a pretty magical time. It would. Um, somebody said 25 cars. <laughs> not 25. I think there's just one car, but it's really tall. <laughs> it's like building size. <laughs> what if all the buildings were moving? What if all the buildings, what if your office came to you, Nick? What if you had your office in your house? No, that's old school. Your office always has to be moving. What if your VR headset transported to you, you to your office? I think that'll happen. I think people, uh, instead of like calling up, be like, you know, like Netflix or any of those like tech companies are like, oh yeah, just work at home. We don't. You can come in like once a week or something. That's just I think, a ploy. I think the next thing is gonna be like, oh, you don't even have to come in at all. Just put in your VR headset. We can all get in the meeting room and uh, chat. That okay? That whole like Google like stay at home, do work from there. That's just a ploy to weed out workers. That's like okay, you've taken, you've been working from home for uh, six years now. You're fired. <laughs> Yeah. What have you been doing? But in those six years, you made a lot of money. What if you are your office? Whoa, singularity. Maglev. Oh, good night, Alessandra. They said good night, so. Wow. Uh, why wallpapers? Why? Why shaped wallpapers? I'm not sure. Or why have wallpaper? Or why have wallpaper? I'm a pink guy myself. I have, yeah, I don't see any wall. I, I see papers on your wall, but I don't see what would constitute as wallpaper. Anything more specific for the footwear industry? Making portfolio. Oh, uh, they're oh. asking for advice about portfolio in the footwear industry. I think, um, I don't know. I mean, I have some friends in the footwear industry and I, and I honestly think like, it's just showing a, it's just showing shoes. It's just like really going for it. I think right now it's really easy to reach out to designers on Instagram. I think, um, you know, you can, I feel like a lot of people are making a name for their sort of like footwear, uh, abilities on Instagram. Yeah. If you, if you aren't posting your sketches in footwear on Instagram, I think you're behind. Yeah. Or I, there's also Pencil Academy, which is free to go to, but that's like the shoe design academy out in uh, Oregon. Yeah. Just kind of funnels into Adidas and Nike. Yeah. Max's comment. Max says that he always cringes at my dystopian future that I have of VR. Yeah. I mean, essentially it's the matrix. I'm all, I'm all about it. I'm sorry, Max. <laughs> Max, have uh, you tried VR? And once you try it, you can't go back. Hello from France. Uh, bonjour. So Tim. <laughs> uh, je m'appelle James. Oh. Nicolas. Oh no. Oh no. We were on. We were on such a good riff. Oh man.
Pencil is yes. I I and I like they do the they do the sneaker world championship. What does that mean? They they um uh they have a competition for for kids to design, you know, for everybody to design a shoe. And then it like they do like brackets. Oh, like they do like voting yeah, brackets. Yeah, yeah. Um maybe I should do that. Which feeds into the whole like March Madness like type bracket system and but uh, Kato Choi, who we met at Square One, who's an excellent, like, I, I didn't, like, there were a lot of times at Square One where I didn't match the, the name of the handle to the person. James Polyus. And, oh, no, I knew James Polyus instantly. But, but, but then I was like, oh, my God, that's who I was just talking to? They're amazing. Kato Choi is an example of that. Like, amazing, amazing footwear sketches. Um... But he he uh, he was in like the final, I don't know final, I don't know who might might have won the pencil academy, but he was definitely in like top ten. Did um, I, did and, I meet him? Yeah, Cato. Come on, he was actually the one who asked us the question about would, would we design guns. Oh yeah. 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 Um, Hello from the less exotic Washington state. Well, hello there in your native tongue. Um, VR makes me feel sick. I want to do it more, but it makes me feel sick to my stomach. What are you, ridiculous, are you doing video games? Because those can get you sick. But gravity sketch is fine. I felt a little queasy after reviewing your models, but it might have been the work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, James. Oh, oh no. Oh. Oh. Oh man. Straight to the heart on that yeah. one. Uh Kato was was f uh fourth, maybe second. But he didn't. Oh, win. was final four? Okay. Good. I mean he's uh he's amazing. He's been he's been posting a lot of sketches recently where he'll show the shoe but he'll also show the inspiration for the shoe on in the corner, sort of a collage, which I think is really it's really nice. It's like, cool. yeah, hmm. um, I've been digging it. Yeah, that's a that's a real burn, Nick. Do you feel like you need to go to the hospital? I feel like. Do I you need, need a wambulance? I feel like I need to go to the 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 morgue. The ER. <laughs> yeah, I'm I dead. mean, put him in a jar. Nick has been cremated. <laughs> uh, um, but uh, anyway. Oh hey, we got late night Nick coming up. Yeah, late night Nick in an hour. In an hour, he's uh, he's gonna be prepping. How do you prep for late night, Nick? Nick, I do this. I do this. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> the little Peter Piper picked a peck. How many pickle peppers did he pick? Sandy sells seashells at the seashore. Sandy sells seashells at the seashore. What? You think you're better than me? No, I just saying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Adam says, "Apply ice to my burn." Yeah, I was uh, ridiculous as I was standing there when Nick met James Polly. It was fun to see him lose his sh for a second. <laughs> uh, he, Nick immediately ran over to me and was like, James, James Polly is here. <laughs> and I was like, what? I've been trying, I've been trying to meet with this guy for a while and finally met him. He's elusive. But, but a guy that was, that went to school with him, who was also at square one, who's also a bad Andy Gao, like I was talking to him a lot. I, I might be mispronouncing your last name. Andy and but, James are BFFs. Yeah, but I was like, I, I didn't even make the connection. And then I looked at Andy's handle, like after I met him, after the weekend was over, and I was like, oh my God, you're amazing too. Like, how did I, I like, everybody needs to wear their handle and their, and their, uh, their profile picture on like, on a sticker that would really at square help, one, that would which really help. and maybe even just like a tile of some of their posts, <laughs> you know, <laughs> prints out of their Instagram. Profile. Yeah, and then I would know exactly who they were. Um, do you know of any parametric CAD VR designing tool? Well, we've been chatting with On Shape today. That's not in VR. Oh, VR. I didn't VR. Uh, no. Do not know of any parametric VR tools yet. Uh, but the future is upon us. Stay tuned. Yeah. Not that I'm going to make anything. I'm just saying stay tuned for the world. Nick, what do you use to hold up your phone when you do Late Night Nick? Oh. 
Uh, well, it's currently holding up this phone. So stick around to the end, maybe James will show yeah, it's Yeah, it's a snake. It's a little snake thing. If you look up like iPhone uh, mounting. Clamp. Clamp, yeah. You'll find it. Um, I've noticed a lot of industrial designers love sci-fi movies. Blade Runner comes to mind, yes. Do you guys have any favorite movies that help you, inspire you in that sense? I was actually talking about this recently, was that I think that the best version, the best like visualization of the future is 70s and and like early, I guess 70s and 80s sci-fi. Back to the Future? Yeah. Oh yeah, cuz I think I think the versions of the future that you see like even Star Wars episode 1, like everything is just too sleek and I love I love like the raw gritty like more tessellated you know, like very chunky version of the future. And even when the computer screens are like green type, like that's the future that I want. I don't want like, I don't want like, you know, touching glass and like, you know, all this, or all touching this stuff. The air. Yeah, we're just touching the air. I, I, I think uh, that is the future, but I, I love, I love the seventies and eighties visions of the future. So whether that's- The future is thinking. Whether that's uh, Star Wars or Blade Runner or Alien, like those movies, just like that visualization is beautiful. I like Back to the Future. I've seen that. Yeah, one. the DeLorean. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, Nick has seen four, five movies tops. Um, so, yeah, Back to the Future is apparently one of them. Willy Wonka was another one. Ooh, that's a good one. Uh, With Gene Wilder, the, the old one. Yeah, the old one. Yeah. Che Che Bang Bang. And yep. the Blues Brothers. Those are the four I've seen. Yeah. Good. VHS. Never dies. Um, you should reach out to ADS about installation name tag idea. I wholeheartedly agree. I'll call, I need to call it Hector. Yeah. Nick is an advisor. I advise. Yeah, you do. You advise. Um... What's one skill you think designers will need to know in the future other than VR? <sighs> Levitation? <laughs> That's a tough question. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, obviously like comfort with, uh, with like rapid visualization tools like 3D printing and all of those sorts of things. I think there's a value in some sort of a I mean, I'm thinking like VR and beyond, like I'm thinking machine learning and algorithmic design. Mm. I think there's a bit of value there. Not super, not, not super like, like I've, ex I've done algorithmic design and I understand like how machine learning works and how it can build its own thing. I think VR is much more impactful for design. Right. But maybe the, the machine learning and uh, algorithmic will get there. Maybe. Oh, I meant install, not installation. That makes sense. But an installation of some, of some sort of sticker on the shirt would also be good. What methods do you use to generate a lot of ideas during form exploration? I know James uses continuous line sketching has helped me a bit more but I'd love some more methods for my process. Post-it notes. Post-it notes are great. Post-it notes with a thick marker. I know Reed is a big advocate of this, but thick markers make you focus less on like little details. Like you can't if you're, if you're working on post-it notes that big with, a, with like a Sharpie. Um, I think it's good. It's like good for like generating like the big ideas of, uh, of each concept. Any other, any other advice? Yeah, that was my, I mean, post notes are good. I mean, you can also reverse the, instead of doing thick markers on a three by three inch of paper, you could do a pen on a, you know, like thumbnail size piece of paper, like sketch a thumbnail with a pen. Sketch a thumbnail on a bigger piece of paper. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, same, same, same I've been I've been watching I've been witnessing Nick's design process more up close since we've been working together 
and there's a lot of thumbnailing on eight and a half by 11. Um, just little ideas and then they get uh, refined and then sketched out bigger, um, which I think is good. Hey, sketch a day. Spencer Yo. Nugent. What's up? Oh my gosh, you two. He, 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 he heart eyed us. Spencer, I mean, we have to give a lot of credit to Spencer for kind of like starting this whole movement. I mean, if it weren't for Spencer Nugent, would there, would there be a Nick Baker Instagram? Would there be an I Draw on Receipts? I don't know. There's, there's a lot of credit. Would there even be Instagram? Would there be? I mean, Sketch a Day, when he started, he wasn't, there was no Instagram. I don't know. I don't think. I mean, it might have just started. I don't remember. Uh, but I mean, I remember like just like looking at Spencer's drawings in college. Like we would sit around and like put them up on a screen, and we would just like try to like emulate, try to like copy one of his pages to like learn more about his style just through like doing it. I mean, that's that's co common practice. It's like you you copy the masters. Um, but uh, big props, big props to Spencer Nugent. He says, oh, stop. Uh, Dom's workshop at Square One was about rapid ideation by just sticking to thumbnails. Yeah, I think it's a good technique. I mean, it's tried and true. Um, you know, you wanna just like start small and build, you know? it's. That's pretty much the way the way to go about it. Uh, definitely wearing the same shirt as Nick. Prove it. No, you're not wearing the same. I modified mine. See, so yeah, oh yeah, cut the head off the bird, for my friend Gabo. How dare you? This just in. Spencer invented Instagram. I know. Call the call the press. Um. Well, guys. Uh, I think I think this might be be it for us tonight. For, for, for I'm I'm gonna be live. Oh now. yeah, he's gonna be live. So this is just like a warm up for Nick. Um, but uh, you guys have any last minute questions? Otherwise, I think we will wrap up this episode of Major Details after the pod. Um, be sure to look out for the YouTube channel. Yeah, we're we're starting YouTube. We're starting at YouTube. Um, just for the podcast. Yeah, just for the pod. Well, and for the for after the pod. And after the pod. Yeah, I think we'll post after the pod, maybe with some some nice visuals. And eventually we'll do vlogs, maybe some pranks. Oh no, <laughs> no <laughs> vlogging, no Jake Paul, no Jake Paul. Uh, but uh, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Oh my God. What? Look, look who just Dino's here. Uh. Rios, man, what's up? Dude, he's killing it right now. He is killing it. He's another person I met during during Square One who I was like, oh my God. Will it be every day, bro? Adam, Adam. With, just... that, with that Disney Channel flow. Oh, sorry, Adam, okay. I was teasing you with the vlog. We're not doing a vlog. Um, but, it, you know, when we do, when we and we create some merch, it'll be selling like a God church. Okay? <laughs> it's every day, bro. Anyway, what? dude, have you not listened to Jake Paul's number one hit, It's Every Day, Bro? Wait, he has a, he's a songer? Yes! <laughs> Come on! He, he's a songer. He's, a, he's, he makes he's somebody who songs. He's a songer. All right, Jake, All right. Gonna we're going to end this. Good night, everybody. We'll see you next week for major details after the pod. Later.